For the last month or so, it's been impossible to ignore the war in Ukraine. Western countries talk about not getting directly involved, but sending aid nearly every day. And that amount of aid seems almost ridiculous, with just the United States sending a billion dollars worth of military equipment, and now announcing yet another 500 million on the way. But after reading the White House announcement, itemizing the list of weapons being sent, I can't help but wonder, how much ammo does an army use in a single day? And I already know what you're thinking. The answer is, it depends. How big of an army, and on what kind of terrain. So, while this video is mainly focused on the current conflict in Ukraine, and whether the most recent round of military aid from the US is enough, I'll just give the answer right now. Based approximately on the size of Ukraine's army, that answer would be about 4,931,506. And that is based on data from another conflict with comparable troop numbers to Ukraine's, about 125,000. During the American war in Vietnam, it would be about 15,630,136 bullets per day based on the estimated 50,000 rounds fired per casualty by the United States, multiplied by estimated military and civilian North Vietnamese deaths of 1,141,000, divided by the entire length of the war from 1965 to 1975. During the Second World War, it would be about 28,082,191 bullets per day, based on 41 billion rounds produced by the United States alone, divided by the four years of America's involvement between late 1941 and 1945. If we wanted to count the bullets fired by all the armies in World War II, that answer would be an astronomical 219,178,082 bullets per day, based on the estimate of 20,000 rounds fired for one casualty times the 24 million military deaths worldwide, divided by only the six years between 1939 and 1945. During the Battle of Stalingrad alone, it was once documented that the German side used 23 million bullets, 753,000 mortar rounds, 576,000 anti-tank rounds, 117,000 artillery rounds, 178,000 hand grenades and 15,000 mines in a single 30-day period. Now, these are just estimates that can vary greatly. While only military deaths and ammunition output were counted, artillery is widely credited for causing the most casualties during war. However, sometimes small arms fire is not meant to kill, but to suppress and push enemies into kill zones. Which brings us back to our comparison at the beginning of this video. As of April 2022, Ukraine's total army size is roughly 125,000 strong, not including naval or air force personnel. Comparatively, the US had a troop presence in Iraq and Afghanistan of nearly 125,000 in 2011. That year, the Government Accountability Office released a survey stating that American servicemen had fired 1.8 billion rounds in combat. Dividing that by 365 days in a year, we reach our estimate of 4,931,506 bullets per day required by an army at war. So that answers the first question. How many bullets does an army the size of Ukraine's use in a day? But that leads to the second question. Is the military aid being sent to Ukraine enough? Customarily, I'll give you that answer before I dive in. So, is the aid being sent by the United States enough? No. Now, what about all the other countries? How about all of that combined? It's still a no. Let's make an assumption. Let's say that Ukraine has enough equipment in the armory to stay engaged with Russian troops for another six months. What they have collectively received 
is enough to add only an additional eight days to their ammunition reserves. Ammunition-wise, the United States has earmarked around 20 million rounds, 9,000 anti-tank rockets, and 1,400 Stinger anti-air rockets to be sent to Ukraine. Of course, a hundred drones, thousands of helmets and bulletproof vests are a nice gesture, but we're talking ammo here. Combine that with all the other countries that have pledged military aid, and the total is somewhere around 32 million rounds of small arms ammo, 45,000 shoulder-fired anti-tank rockets, including javelins, and around 5,600 shoulder-fired anti-air rockets. That simple equation being 32 million rounds of ammo divided by an average of 4 million rounds a day, giving us only 8 days. Now, naturally, the Ukrainian army likely does not use the doctrine of overwhelming suppressing fire that the United States does. Clearly, they will conserve their supplies as much as possible and could drag it out for much longer. But still, if major engagements continue, these supply margins are razor thin. But what about all those shoulder-fired rockets? Well, for all those anti-tank rockets going to Ukraine, the lion's share are AT-4s and M-72 laws. Only about 2,000 are javelins. With nearly 500 Russian tanks being destroyed at the time of this recording, that could mean a quarter of their javelins are already spent. And regarding the Stingers, it's been reported that Russian jets are flying between 200 and 300 sorties per day over certain cities, with some reports stating the jets are firing long range from outside of Ukrainian airspace, decidedly outside of the range of a shoulder-fired Stinger. If a Stinger could be fired at every Russian jet that took flight, that supply would be completely exhausted in just 18 days furthering the argument that Ukraine needs a more potent anti-air system. Now, where the majority of aid does exist is humanitarian, with a whopping $6 billion pooled by all the countries that have sent aid. That's more than enough to keep every hospital in Ukraine running at full capacity for the next several years, which is extremely important, don't get me wrong, but it's not just hospitals that need cash. It's potentially every building in the country. Schools leveled, food warehouses destroyed, gas, water, sewer, electrical, and internet lines severed. To repel and push back the full might of the Russian army, however effective Ukraine has proven to be in the last month, the amount of military aid so far is simply not enough. This conflict is changing the way modern diplomacy works. If the world doesn't send Ukraine the firepower it needs, another country will be next. Putin's invasion is casting ominous shadows over Moldova. The place watching this situation in Ukraine very closely is Taiwan. Both Japan and Russia remain formally at war due to a dispute over what are called the Southern Kurils in Russia and the Northern Territories in Japan.